to make some noise, but not enough. Oh, are, are you, you kidding? kidding? Yes, no. No. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. We have some great stories for all of you guys today. All those stories are timestamped down below in the description for your convenience. Our first story today though is a very big one. I will have a separate video on this actual story here. A separate video kind of entangling all the information about it. I'm going to brief you guys on a very short story here about the ESCA referral scandal going on as we speak. Between this guy, Mario Wakim, the victim in this case, actually he didn't provide me with any pictures of himself. So his Twitter will be on screen for you guys as well as down below if you want to send him a DM or at least tweet at him and give him some, some support in this actual case. He's actually facing off against Craig Levine. Craig Levine, the CEO of ESL, also the executive vice president. He's also the president and co-founder of ESCA. A long list of titles to Craig Levine there and he does not want to pay out over $35,000 or close to $35,000 to Mario who actually earned that amount of money through the ESCA referral system. So to give you guys some brief details of this case which is currently going on right now, Mario is trying to get an attorney and a lawyer to suit him up for battle against Craig Levine and ESCA who do not want to pay him out. As of right now, ESCA did already pay $3,500 to Mario for his initial advertisements. They don't want to pay the remainder though, the remainder being Mario who has actually earned close to $35,000 through the ESCA referral system, which means if you guys do not know, you guys yourselves, if you want to refer anyone to the ESCA system, they will pay you $6.95 for every single referral. Now Mario, he went out and spent several thousand dollars on advertisements to that referral system and he actually earned nearly 5,000 referrals, earning him nearly $35,000. ESCA did initially pay him $3,500, but ever since then, the remainder, the remaining over $30,000 has yet to be paid. They don't want to pay Mario because they thought it was misleading advertisements or false advertisements, and he was trying to impersonate ESCA, and therefore he did not earn the money. They would have gotten those referrals anyway. So that battle, that legal case is going on as we speak. Best of luck to you, Mario, and for everyone who's actually interested in this case, it's still going on right now. I'm in touch with Mario himself. I've yet to reach out to Craig Levine from ESCA, but we'll actually update you guys as I find out more about this case and I will have an entirely separate video to cover more details about this for those of you who are actually interested. So that happens right now. ESCA apparently owes this guy nearly $35,000 and right now he's also in credit card debt because he took out some loans. He's also a full-time student and he actually took out a bunch of loans and he was going to be paid back by ESCA but because they're not paying him back those tens of thousands of dollars he actually is in debt right now. He's on loans and he's paying about $150 to $170 in interest every single month until ESCA does pay him back. So I'll give you guys more details as this case does escalate. And also speaking of people being out of jobs, we actually have Launders who as of right now is done working for Yahoo Esports. Yahoo Esports actually launched just a little over a year ago back in March of 2016 and they have now disconnected and discontinued that entire branch of Yahoo Esports to pursue Yahoo Sports or other sports in general and no longer Esports. So it seems unfortunately enough here guys, Esports marketing or Esports and that kind of sense for Yahoo was actually not paying the bills and they did cut off and discontinue from now on their Esports section which means Launders for the time being a great CSGO pro reporter had conducted so many interviews with several pro players out there, had done some great jobs. If you guys have not actually seen his work, I'll link his Twitter down below for all of you guys to show him some great support. He surely will be back though sometime soon with updates. As of right now though, he is jobless, but certainly in the future he'll be entangled in the CSGO scene and hopefully in esports in general as Yahoo Esports is now shut down. Kind of a rarity as of right now because we're seeing so many people out there, so many investors getting into the esports scene. It's kind of a rarity to see someone like Yahoo actually get out of the scene and discontinue their coverage of esports. And for all you Optic fans out there, it seems uh, I myself an Optic fan, a North American fanboy as I am. Unfortunately enough, more Optic changes have come to play. We've had so many people now try out for Optic, which I do agree is probably the best way to, to actually go about signing a player. So many teams out there just go ahead and sign a player after a few practices. Optic though really signs them on as trials. We had Freakazoid, Hiko, and now we had Hazed and, and Jason R going back and forth, all competing for one spot. Despite the many changes throughout late 2016 as well, Optic has now finalized their roster at least for the time being, which probably just going to be a short time here, as Hayes has now stepped down as their coach, and he'll be replacing Jason R as their new IGL, so their full roster on screen for you guys as well. Optic Jason R is now off the lineup, apparently stepping down because traveling all that much would actually interfere with his streaming schedule. Now, if you guys do not know Jason R, he is pretty much a full-time streamer up there as one of the top CSGO streamers who streams most frequently, and that does seem to be his day job and job day-to-day -day life, so it does kind of, uh, it makes sense if you're not going to be winning
playing tournaments or if you don't feel like your your job as a part of Optic is going to be a long term thing, it makes sense for himself to build himself on a streaming platform instead of playing with Optic for a few months and having him be cut down the road. So Hayes has replaced Jason R and Jason R is now officially off Optic. And for any of you out there who do collect stickers, I myself was collect stickers a lot mainly around the major time. I actually have a special video, a little bit of a leak for you guys as of right now for PGL Krakow. I'm going to be doing a special video where I do invest anywhere from $500 to $1,000 of my own money into the sticker market and try and make as much money back off a major as possible. That video will come out obviously way, way down in the future. But for all you sticker collectors out there who notice, NIP Freiburg did obviously lead that roster a couple days ago and his stickers did skyrocket in price. Actually, the lowest of the stickers only went up about 100%. Yeah, only 100%. It only doubled in price. The rest of his stickers actually went up at least two to 300% in price over the last few days and they're still sticking around that. So for all of you guys out there who want to invest in stickers, I'm not going to lie to you. I actually slipped some Forest stickers into my inventory because many of you guys know I still think Forest will also leave NIP, but if it does follow the same uh, the same actual mark that Freiburg did, his stickers should be going up sometime soon as well, as many uh, as well as many Godsent stickers out there. So for all of you guys who want to predict roster changes, I do advise you guys to buy those stickers while they're still cheap. I'm not trying to influence the market here at all, but Freiburg stickers, almost all of them did skyrocket in price, and that was pretty a uh, pretty drastic decision and crazy crazy thing to see just based off one uh, one move to be made. So hopefully in the future we'll have other stickers go up in price and maybe I can maybe I can pay the bills that way. And speaking of paying the bills, I seriously I want to take a time in almost every video. I, I know I can't in the future, but thank you all who have used my OP Skins affiliate code. Just yesterday we broke 200 users. That means I'm making 1%. So for anyone who's actually confused on what I make from you guys using my OP Skins affiliate code, it is free to use. All you guys is click the link in the description. All you guys is click that link and sign into OP Skins. Unfortunately, as of right now, you guys don't get anything off that, but I make 1% of your transactions. Now that's a very, very small percentage, but, but combined with all 200 of you right now, it's a decent amount and I now currently make more off OP Skins referrals thanks to you guys than I do from YouTube ad revenue, which is kind of sad, but thank you all so much. We have now broken 200 users. Next step, 300 and then that's probably going to be it. But hope you guys all enjoyed that. Thank you all so much for that. Lastly, for I have you guys today, we have HLTV with a new rating update. It now introduces HLTV rating 2.0. The old system only based it off three tiny subjects and now it seems they have integrated 10 new ways to compare players and actually rate players and assess them in a full capability. I'll post it on screen for all of you guys. It now seems when we look at HLTV ratings for individual players, we are now going to get the full grasp of everything they do. So that was a great HLTV update. They updated their website design a couple weeks ago or about a month ago and now this rating system update great job at HLTV I'm very excited to see how this actually affects our player ratings and what players are going to stand out more because now that we assess the full circle of things and for our very last story today we actually had team secret announced this just about a couple hours ago at the point of you guys watch this video they have now released their entire female CSGO team which is very shocking to many people out there because that is one of the best if not a guaranteed top two female CSGO lineup we have Zaz Giuliano on top of that we have Vilga who I think is personally one of the best better female CSGO players of all time, but do not worry. She actually replied to that tweet and said, do not worry guys, we have announcements coming soon. So it does seem that roster has been signed by someone else. I am a little bit skeptical though because Miss Harvey also left CLG Red about earlier this week. So we could see some kind of a conjoinment between those, those players, but as of right now, do not worry about Team Secret players. It does seem they've been signed by someone else, but Team Secret no longer has a female CSGO team after being one of the better female CSGO teams we've had in the past year and a half. That's it for today's episode. Of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoy everything and thank you all so much for the great comments in the last videos. Please comment down below. I'll interact with all of you guys and hopefully reply to as many as possible. Hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you. I will see you all tomorrow. Remember, I like you. Goodbye. Down does make some noise, but not enough. Oh, are, are you, you kidding me?